Hi, I'm Lisa Collins, publisher of LA Focus Newspaper, and I am excited to be able to invite you into an interview that I'm doing with Amorosa. How do you feel about President Trump today, and have you had any contact with anyone in his camp? Well, I have a, a lot of friends who um, are throughout the administration, whether they're ambassadors, um, whether they serve in the Pentagon, helping with our armed forces. I have incredible friends in the Veterans Administration. I still have a ton of friends in the West Wing. Um, and so I stay in touch with them because those are friendships that were forged in the middle of battle and those relationships are valuable to me. Um, no matter how many times this president and his team attempts to contact me and to reach out, I haven't communicated with them when they offered me thousands and thousands of dollars to stay in their camp and tried to bribe me to remain a part of that organization. I turned it down because the Trump I met in 2003, the one that millions of people watched on The Apprentice is not the same pres person that's leading this country or trying to lead this country. And so... I have no desire whatsoever to be around him, to be connected to him, or even to communicate with him. From your standpoint, what does he think of Black people? Um, does he even think of Black people? I mean, it's not evident to me that he does. I mean, it's not, what does he? The question is, does he? Because we've been absent in every one of the major policy decisions that he made. He passed a major tax overhaul and we were absent from that. He talks about the criminal justice reform, that reforms that he made, but there were very little enhancements for women, particularly African-American women who were incarcerated and, and struggling to to uh, be incorporated in, into society. I mean, I I don't see any evidence in any of the decisions that he's made that he actually thinks about black people. What well, does he think he is? They are inferior to him. Well, I I had mentioned before that he's transactional, and so he, maybe he doesn't think that he gets anything in return by supporting them? I don't know. I just know that he is not um, he is not committed to united in this country or healing race relations or the divide that we see. Um, and he continues to say that there is no problem with the justice system, for instance, or he continues to blame democratic leadership in cities and states that are predominantly African-Americans, as opposed to taking responsibility for the fact that you are now president. These are issues and policies that are under your purview that you can actually change. And so without him taking that responsibility, I don't know that he does, in fact, think about the well-being of our community. So when you see him with a Kanye West or Diamond and Silk or Larry Elder, what are your thoughts? I, you know, I don't watch his antics. I don't get drawn into the distractions. There are too many very important issues that are facing our country that I think we should focus on. When you see those things, when you see what's happening with Cube or with Kanye, um, I assure you they are in fact distractions. And I would caution um, your viewers not to get distracted. Our focus, our goal should be on getting new leadership that will actually fight for us, as opposed to focusing on the sideshow that he keeps putting on that does not in any way benefit us. Knowing him like you know him, what do you think is the end game for Trump if he gets four more years? Oh, um, I don't even want to think about that. I can't even fathom that. Um, our, our nation would never survive another four more years. And so I'm going to focus on um, doing as much as I can to make sure that doesn't happen so that I don't even have to come up with those hypotheticals. Donald Trump needs to go, period. And what was the most painful moment you endured? Was it that meeting with Kelly? Oh, um, that was terrible. But um, I think... For me, Charlottesville was probably the lowest moment in that administration. That woman died. She died unnecessarily because Donald Trump failed to act. And some of the information that we received um, that I, I can't elaborate on um, are you know, images that will remain in my head forever. And and even, you know, the call to her mother was was 
not handled well, well or appropriately, but more importantly, seeing men with tiki torches, um, uh, white supremacists marching through our streets, like we were back in the 50s and 60s again. Um, that let me know that um, instead of moving the country forward, that Donald Trump had failed at what he promised when he took that oath, and he was actually moving our country back. He was dividing us even more. And so for me, Charlottesville, what I would have to say, marked the lowest period for me in the White House. All right, well, good luck. It's great talking to you as a, as always, and um, uh -oh. talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. If you like what you saw, Chesney, tell him what to do. Subscribe, comment below, share, hit the bell notification for icon. Subscribe, like, share, comment below, and don't forget the bell icon so you can get the notifications. Give us a thumbs up. Thanks for tuning in, and see you later.